What's up, people? Welcome to the Health is Wealth podcast. I'm your host, Jason Shibley, and this is the show we talk about the relationship between your health, your wealth, and we're not just talking about the push-ups and dollar bills. Bobby Jackson is with me today, as always. That's right. Partner in crime right here, Bobby Jackson from the Custom Fitness Institute in yeah, Pompano Beach. Exactly. You Gotta are the crime. plug. Partner, not so much, but a crime. Definitely a lot That's of crimes happening. Is. Okay, so today's episode is about exercise mechanics. We're going to dive in a little bit as well as exercises that we can't stand people doing wrong and a little bit about breathing techniques and how you should be breathing through your exercises. And we'll give you some examples on that. Yeah. So basic mechanics is how we're going to start this off. Bobby has no mechanics. You ever see him walk down the street? There is no mechanics there. He's There's just wobbling mechanic. down there like I'm a penguin. one flopping down the way. Yeah. So that's... Those are the types of things we're going to be talking about. Breathing being a great example of those exercise mechanics. We're not going to be breaking down the form on any particular movement. It's more about just generally how you should be approaching pushing, pulling, lower body exercises and some of those little kind of unwritten rules that we should be following in the gym yep. to just make each one of our exercises a little bit more efficient, hopefully a little bit more pain free as well. You know, a lot of times people feel a certain way through an exercise because they're just out of that alignment just a little bit or they're yeah. not really sure where certain body parts are supposed to be how things are supposed to be lining up and hopefully this can take care of some of that so yeah so let's dive into uh, some of the mechanics first so um, one of the things I like to bring up is hand positions um, hand uh, positions the, on a push or hand positions on a pull uh, just just overall the three basic positions there's uh, pronated uh, neutral and the supinated position mm -hmm. with your hand. So supinated being an underhand. Um, so like a bicep curl, you're going to be in a supinated mm -hmm. position with your palms up and the neutral, your palms are going to be facing together and your pronated position where your palms are down. So whatever movement you're doing, um, a lot of people that aren't used to doing weight training, um, but do spin usually know the neutral position. And then the people that I usually run into that actually know somewhat of hand positions out there are people that know how to do um, back workouts, pull up positions. So oh, yeah. Yeah. that's about it. Other than that, most people don't know what the heck we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. But basically what he's talking about, and again, he explained it pretty well, but I'm just gonna add on to it. We start with the angle on the hand, right? Yep. So it's that fully supinated or externally rotated with the palm up, and then we gradually get to that internally rotated or that pronated portion. And that applies to both pushing and pulling. Really, that's it. It's it's the biggest difference. That's what differentiates between a pull up and a chin up. That chin up being yep. the palms towards us. Yep, military style in. chin up. Your chin you can go over the bar. You can do that neutral grip, or we're doing you know that that pronated. And so, um, what I also like to tell people too is that's also going to kind of determine the path of the elbow, right? So yep. especially on bench or a, a dumbbell bench press, for an example, if I am fully internally rotated with the hands, those elbows are gonna try to follow as well. It's gonna be harder for me to keep my elbows in. So if we do kind of that 45 degree, just slightly rotated in, it's an easier way for me to control that elbow. And again, that applies to whether I'm pulling something towards me or pushing away. It's okay if I want the elbows tight to the body, or the elbows wide, that hand's gonna follow the same thing that the elbow's doing. Yeah, and those mechanics, uh, why we switch those grips on basic things is to uh, work around injuries with shoulders or hips as well. And a lot of times we're taking away or adding some of the assisting muscles. So your assisting muscle when we do a pull up is your biceps. It's not the primary muscle that we're trying to hit. So by changing one into one of those positions, um, makes the pull-up easier or harder mm -hmm. um, for someone that can do yeah. one or a hundred pull-ups. So yeah. usually chin-ups, underhand pull-ups for people that are listening to this are easier because are easier. you add more biceps. So, so you see the guys and the girls with longer arms that tend to have um, an easier, um, they find pull-ups or chin-ups to be easier because they have those long biceps to help them. The people with the mm -hmm. shorter arms like me and Bobby, have these little pterodactyl arms um and me I'm, yeah you're you're i, I mean, have you're, short arms you don't have long arms that's for sure i definitely have long arms no for, for who relative to my for body five, type and my five, proportions six? for someone that's, five six you have long arms so yeah. i have the long arms and so just like most people it's the okay if i got to do one of them or what we'd naturally go to is you'd see somebody walk over and they're just gonna go straight for that chin up which yeah. is no problem because that's still no. going to help us develop the back that primary muscle series being the lats and so if that's where we need to start, that's all good. But 
like Jay said, if we want to gradually increase that difficulty and that resistance, really, that we're going to feel on the back, we're just going to let those hands follow the same path yeah, and let's of progression. And for example, for people that are listening that have had trainers and don't know why they make them do certain pull-ups or chin-ups, I typically start with people that want to learn how to, um, to do chin-ups first because I can add their biceps to help them with the movement. Whether I'm doing assisted pull-ups or not, that has nothing to do with what I'm trying to focus on. Mm -hmm. Now, as you get stronger, then I will switch you to a pronated grip, a wide pull-up and stuff where your palms are facing the bar, you're pulling yourself up and they mm -hmm. typically are harder because you're taking away literally 65 to 75% of the bicep assistance. Absolutely. And then even crazier on that progression would be then widening the hands, right? So we're yep. making it, we're putting ourselves at even more of a mechanical disadvantage by not only removing muscles that are helping assist, but then we're just changing the leverage points of the whole exercise where it makes it incredibly difficult to do but once you've worked up to that level you're going to need those little variations to get the same level of challenge yep so. absolutely let's sneak down to the lower part let's let's uh let's sneak down to the lower part let's, uh, let's talk about the mechanics of our um squat deadlift mm -hmm. area what's the biggest thing that so um, what i remember getting coached in high school sports was keep your feet straight feet at shoulder width that's how we squat just keep squatting that way yeah and what, that's that nowadays it's eh. nowadays we, we don't need that really it depends on how we naturally squat down so do we naturally want to widen the knees out significantly while we're on our way down and especially during the development portion of this movement i just try to keep it as comfortable and as natural as people want to move so some people okay they're more comfortable keeping their knees in that's relative to the strength and muscle you have on your hips whatever yeah. but it's wherever we're most comfortable at the beginning trying to get as low as possible trying to get that hip down to knee height if the knees want to stay you know the upper leg wants to stay parallel then that's when those feet should be parallel some people wider hips different hip angles yeah. they're going to want to widen though you know the upper leg out i just say put the foot the same exact angle as the quads if, if it's a wide angle just line it all up and let those feet go wide as well we might say that might be another progression too Yep. It might be, okay, we've conquered our natural foot position. Now we're going to intentionally put ourselves in different alignment of the feet to add the difficulty to it and strengthen different areas. Yeah, and I don't like, uh, uh, when it comes to the mechanics of a squat or a deadlift, um, I don't care um, what type of squat or deadlift you're doing. The mechanics when you're lower half, and Bobby gave a great example with that as in um, the width, it's different for everyone because some people have wider hips, mm -hmm. so their their um, foot position might be a little different for a basic squat, back squat, front squat, uh, single um, goblet squat, oh, yeah. sumo oh, squat. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. all the same at the end of the day. I always try to, you know, I you know most people know that I like to dumb things down to make it basic. Sitting once I see how you naturally sit down into a chair, that's usually a, can I can usually tell someone where their normal stance is mm -hmm. going to be for a squat, even a kettlebell swing. Yeah. I can find that. Now the hinging of the hip is different from the different types of squats that we have, but that's really where the load is coming from. That's the only really difference of the names mm -hmm. of everything is where the load is coming from. So if the weight's below your feet, if the weight's weights above your shoulders, if it's in front of in your front or um plane of motion or on your back for a back mm -hmm. squat so yeah. i usually try to dumb down and let people i, I let them uh, my assessment on their mechanics is okay show me how you sit down sit in the chair i love there. it my biggest issue and stuff and this is going down the road of exercises i can't stand people doing wrong is a squat is they when they just tuck their knees in and you don't sit down like that you're not tucking you're not budging your knees together yeah. as you sit down but, i've never seen anyone with bad knees sit down like that there we go or it's the people who sit down using their arms <laughs> yeah they got to hold themselves down like you're trying to sit in the well, toilet after leg day and it's that no 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 let's take those, the, those sitting down shouldn't be an upper body exercise right so yeah. but i really like your your way of evaluating that is the sitting down i was just evaluating a high school basketball player for doing yeah. some squats and some jump squats and but i just did the exact opposite it was sit down okay set your feet up however feels natural and just stand up 
Yep. Don't 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 touch your seat. Keep your hands up in front of you. Yeah. That also helped us visualize what angle I need to lean forward in order to put the weight through my heels and be able to push up anyway. Yeah. So this was the like very first step into doing any squats for the kid. And it was the okay, we gotta understand that we do need that little bit of a lean forward with the upper body. We have to have that center of gravity over the heel before we can yes. expect to actually step up. I can't always be leaning into my Smith machine. Yep. And it was that, but it was the, okay, just stand up normally. How wide do your feet feel like they need to be? Yeah. Do we feel any pulling on the inside of the knee? Okay, great. Bring the toes in. Do we feel the pull on the outside? Okay, great. Pull them out a little bit. And it was that finding the right position. And not only were we squatting, but we were doing jump squats. I put the big weight vest on them. Yeah. And it was trying to do that little plyometric, you know, from the bottom type of jump. But it started with, okay, we got to have the feet right. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to be twisting stuff up. And it goes back to what you said uh, at the beginning. You, Someone might have more of a narrow stance. And I, I typically, the longer the people there are, the more narrow stance they tend mm -hmm. to like to have. Yeah. Because they tend to have more um, glutes and weaker abductor adductor issues. Mm -hmm. The shorter people tend to have stronger hips because their uh, hips are wider anyway. So they tend to like a wider stance anyway. Yeah. So, which is kind of funny when you really break that down, uh, it should be the opposite to build those weaknesses. But yeah. We always go to our strengths, but that's, everyone always moves to their strengths. But that's why some people need to you know, give us a call because if you've never done a comfortable squat, there might be some other things going on. There could be mobility issues. There could be flexibility type muscles. Yeah. There could be other little things going on, preventing you from even finding that comfortable position in the first yeah, place. Yeah, surprisingly enough, it's most of the time it's not a weakness. It's a tightness that we yeah. have to fix first. It, um, I mean, from from sixteen year olds uh, getting into a sport to seventy five year olds that are just trying to uh, be functional out of their sports cars. Yeah. So and yeah. that's you know just knowing the mechanics. So so if you are listening to this, make sure, just sit down and look at your feet. Do it a couple of times. Don't try to set up your feet naturally. Just sit down, stand up, look down, and see where your feet are, Perfect. and you'll see. Perfect. You'll, you'll learn a little something about yourself. So uh, we're not going into deep conversations of why sumo squats are better mm -hmm. than, than front squats or goblet squats. And stuff like that just look at your mechanics of where your feet end up when you sit up yeah. from a couch a chair a toilet whatever it is and starting with that natural alignment i like that one too even close your eyes if you need to think about pushing through the heel of the foot and just figure out where the feet actually have to be what angle so i'm not loaded one side or the other and just start moving yeah, yeah. so let's have a little bit more fun with this let's let's go into the exercises um, that we really get annoyed when people do wrong What's the, what's the one outside of the squat and pull up? Mm. I mean, that, the seated row is a big one. The seated row? The, the low like really, cable row really where any, up? Yeah, really any type of row, but definitely that seated cable row. Yeah. Well, you don't have mechanic no, no chest support, right? So people are kind of freestyling. They have to use their core strength, or at yeah. least they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be. Um, and they're not supposed to be pulling those handles like they're on a rowing machine. Yeah, different. right. So it's not that big hip extension. Yeah. You're supposed to be keeping your body immobilized. The only thing we should see moving is the arms, right? It's that the, the whole legs. body's not supposed to be going. It's supposed to yeah. just be Pinch. be smooth like that. But that also ties into, you know, the ego in the gym. No, the ego Some in the gym is have. usually the issue with that. And a lot of the most, and because we both went to school for this, when you're doing a seated row, your feet are supposed to be on the ground. The platform up there isn't mm -hmm. for tending. They have it there because it's for more ego strength building and uh, really trying to crank the weight, but it's technically, you don't need your feet mm -hmm. there and you're protecting your low back when your feet are down and you're like, well, I can't pull much weight. We'll focus like on more of the Apparently engagement. you're not supposed to. Focus on the mechanics exactly. that we've been talking about yep, today yep. and focus on pinching your shoulder blades back like where you can pinch a pencil. You should be able to it's pinch. the quality of the activation. That's it. You That's should be able to pinch your shoulder blades to your spine. That's mm -hmm. the goal. It has nothing to do about the weight at the beginning. You'll get way more out of that squeeze than adding another 60 pounds to that low row, yeah. which, uh, man, yeah, I'm glad you brought that one up. And, and that is a good thing, not saying we're going to end up looking like a bodybuilder, but no. bodybuilders do a great job of consciously activating muscle groups that they're working on. And, you know, for them, of course, they're trying to make that muscle physically larger. But even if it's not, even if we're just trying to make it a little bit stronger, a little bit more pain free, a little yep. bit more stable, we still want to focus on the quality of that activation, yeah. knowing what we're supposed to be feeling, where we're supposed to be feeling it. And sometimes just slowing down mm -hmm. can get even more out of each individual rep with less weight. 
Yeah. It doesn't have to be more weight. And a low, because a low row is a great move. It, it helps build posture. Um, I've used it to help um, um, build women's um, saggy boobs. You know, saggy boobs. Saggy there you boobs. Go. Okay. It's a natural boob lift because but, you're, you're pulling, boom, you're, right you're allowing, because we're always hunched over when you're sitting at the chair, at the dinner table, at your conference meetings and stuff, on a webinar, on a podcast, we're always hunched over, our shoulders are tucked in and stuff. You need to pull those shoulder blades back. So you're yeah. really, when you try to build your posture up, you're actually lifting your chest up. So those ladies out there, Damn don't right do there. it every day, but pull those shoulder blades back mm -hmm. and stuff, almost like you already have your tight bra on, because I know I wear them all the damn time. Yeah, man, you're tight, stuff. bro. But pull, uh, pull those shoulder blades back, and don't do this every day just because I'm saying this either. You know, I'll you're have someone out there, rowing Jason, all day. I've been rowing Jason, every I'm on, day. I'm on day 97, day and stuff's starting to hurt. Like 10,000 steps okay, days, 97 yeah. days in a row of rowing. Yeah, yeah you're not going to get a boob lift just by doing that, but it will True. help. And it will yeah. help your posture, and it can take away some of your low back pains as well. Definitely, ladies. definitely. So, if done properly. And uh, one that bothers me is the sit-ups. The sit-ups, sit -ups, crunches. Um, everyone does them wrong. Oh man! Um, they're if when you're on a decline bench, they're using so much hip flexor and momentum that they're not the, engaging the arch back. Oh, and I used to do that too, right? I no, thought, I oh man, I throw that decline on there, and look at how much more my body moves. Yeah. I'm moving more, so that must be better. Yeah. And then I'm arching my back halfway up, like yeah. leading with my belly button. Yep. <laughs> I'm just like, that yep. was just again no quality of the activation of the muscle group. Yep. Of course, when it's bros in the gym, I thought I had to have that forty-five pound plate that I'm holding my chest on, like I'm trying to do workouts in the pen, and it's just like that's totally unnecessary. Yeah, totally and, unnecessary. Uh, and uh, women, women do uh, crunches wrong too because you're what? Yeah, women, women do, do it wrong too wrong. because they have a butt. Most of the women uh, still have a butt. Bobby doesn't have a butt. I mean, I got more butt. But I've been working some butt man you doing some lunges lately yeah man okay well lunges you know, that's we'll right save that for your wife tighter hammy smaller panties over here all man. day all day all day but you got to keep that low back shoved into the mat onto the bench whatever you're using even on a stability mm -hmm. ball mm -hmm. you have to shove that low back into the into it's got to be grounded mm -hmm. and then engage the core by crunching up those shoulder yep. blades are coming up it's not your neck first it's your shoulder blades your neck should follow with you at the same time we're drawing the belly button in draw the belly button it's in. we want the stomach to be concave which some people laugh well i've never had a concave stomach but the idea being we're sucking in we're not leading with the arch like i used to do back in college so yeah. Yeah, no, you want, no, and, engage, yeah. engage the core. It doesn't have, like Bobby said, it doesn't have to be a big move to get results. Actually, the, the more controlled movement, you'll be burning with less reps and less effort and seeing that's, more results. That's why I like, and pro tip right here, I, I, we said we weren't going to get off a, too much of a topic or a tangent on specific exercises, but one I like on the ground with the crunch is, you know, of course, crunching with the upper body, but having the feet up off the floor. So I've got that positive hip angle, because my shifts. knees and my elbows, and so it shifts. I've got that posterior pelvic tilt, right? So I'm, yep. I'm coming forward. I'm already in a positive angle on the hip. My hip's not opened up yep. all the way flat as if I was laying, sitting on a bench with the legs locked down. So, so those are those ones where, yeah, I can do a few more reps. I can usually do pretty high volume on those, but I really feel like I am properly pulling the abs from both ends yeah from top and all the way from the bottom all right the there way. that's pretty good so all the way yeah and good then, call on that one yeah and let's uh, let's go down another annoying one for me is lat pull down so we talked about okay. the pull-ups at the beginning of the show lat pull downs in a machine quit swinging back there like you're pulling money to you or something i it's, don't know what they're doing exactly but it's they the feel same like they're tarzan that same trying. idea where we're flailing our body and it's that if that's what we're doing Yes, you're using muscles, but no, you're not using the right muscles yeah. or getting the right amount of work done in the muscles we think we yeah. are. Yeah, so, so there's two things with the lap pull down and bug the heck me. The people that go behind the neck with a straight bar. I love that. And, and oh, man. Benjamin who's, in your nerves. Now, if you have, dad was out here doing that have, crap? That's if you have one. the flexibility in your scapulas, I'm not going to argue as long as your neck and, and vertebrae is straight. That's the key, especially in the neck area and the shoulder area. I won't argue too much. That's you, also... You get about 5 to 10% that I won't argue on that. And that's only if seminar. you've done regular lat pull downs for 20 plus years correctly, safely, yeah. and strong, then I'll let you go without giving yeah. you too much crap. Full, but and, and in we're the talking, meantime, regular lat pull downs do plenty for all of us. So it's yeah. not like you just, oh, well, that's 
that doesn't work anymore. I can't get results off of a regular lat pull down. So yep. now I have to go so, behind the head. It's yep. So whether you're in a machine, we're talking about a pronated position. So your palms are facing away from you. Your hands are wider than your shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. You're pulling down full extension up there. And the number one trick I always tell people, imagine you're against the wall. There okay. you, go. you don't Perfect. lean. You can't yep. break that wall behind you. If your head is hitting the wall behind you, you're swinging way too much. You need to lighten the weight up. Lighten the weight. And, and really, when you start to use the momentum, all you're doing is putting strain on your neck and you're putting strain on your hip flexors because the only reason you're doing that much weight is because the, the bench um, that's locked, got your uh, legs locked down or is, is preventing you from going anywhere until mm -hmm. you let go. So yeah. quit swinging like Tarzan. Quit swinging. And stay against the wall. Imagine you're against the wall and pull straight mm -hmm. down. You'll be a bit, you'll have a better pull up yep. eventually too. Eventually, when you do that properly, definitely, so, definitely. So I've got a good one off yeah. the top. I don't know if you had this. No, go down, ahead. But push ups. Yep, presses. And that and the, but yep. that pulls into that first tip Jason gave at the beginning of this episode, which is be conscious of the angle of the hands right yep. on the floor. That's the same idea being essentially with the hand open, of course, hands are flat on the floor. But as I turn that hand, we're seeing my elbows rotating as well. Yep. If the fingers are tipped away, then my elbows are in. Yep. And vice versa. If the fingers tip in, that elbow follows and goes wide. And we want what I usually coach is at the bottom of the position, a 45 degree angle between the elbow and the torso right there. Yep. We don't want that full 90 looking like a little kid doing the push-ups with the elbows really high and the shoulders all scrunched up and everything looking crazy. It's keep the shoulders low distribute that weight we won't just be burning up the shoulders then we've got distribution of that weight across the chest across the shoulder we got the tricep helping out and we're going to get a lot better development through that oh, yeah well. and, and yeah it's one that a lot of people do wrong um it's a very basic one so people don't cave your shoulder blades in don't just let your core just flop bottom and cave it's a big issue a lot of mm -hmm. people think they're doing properly it's okay to be on your knees when you're doing push-ups okay a full traditional military push-up is 80 percent of your body weight so if you're 200 pounds you're pushing 180 pounds for one time that's a, so you that's wouldn't a do that on a bench weight. press that's a lot of weight to push mm -hmm. it's not an issue don't get your ego uh in the way of finding proper form so and like bobby said it's all about that when the hands the more the fingers go away from you, the more the elbows come in, that engages more triceps involved, the more your fingers come toward you, making a diamond in front of mm -hmm. you. When you're looking down at the floor almost, the, the more your elbows go out and you'll get, you get, so you can always change it up all the time. That's so, it. That's and especially if we have that little pinch in the shoulder, maybe yeah. an old, old shoulder surgery, things like that. There's always variations we can use to lighten the load a little bit start working on better form, even if it feels like we start over from the top. Yeah. Even if it feels like we're starting over with an entire exercise because we're changing the form finally, that's fine. Yep. That's fine. No, no real exercise enthusiast is ever gonna give you crap for pulling the weight back, pulling the reps back a little bit, calming down with it. And just, if it's day one for a new movement or a new variation, make sure you're treating it as day one. Just and start and everyone, And everyone, including us, that's, uh, listening to this once the result is in the day you're after the results if you're after doing a specific thing perfectly then um well good luck because yeah. because if you're after the results the results will come when the technique is there and i'm more concerned about good residual effects from exercise and the results than i am about just doing something crazy one day just so i can post it on facebook right yeah. i don't care i've never put a pr tagged it on Facebook just to air that out so everybody knows how cool I was that one time for like five minutes in the gym. If I look okay for 365 days out of the year, I think that means a lot more. And I think a lot of you guys would probably agree. Yeah. And there's a, a lot of my clients know there's a, we have a new saying through the pandemic. Um, ugly workouts make pretty people, pretty workouts make ugly people. Okay. And the, and that does not mean so. Wow. Well, let me say that again. Believe, I can't believe you just called me pretty. That yeah. Thanks, man. Well, your workouts are ugly. Yeah. That you makes go. you pretty. So yeah. you have to push. As Bobby made a little comment about the social media stuff, you're posting one good set that you're fresh. You're not even sweating. <laughs> and you did it one time. Uh, one set. I know where so many people. I do, where, where I'm in the behind the scenes sweating my butt off after my 10th set. And I'm like, you should post this one. Me yeah, dripping right. sweat. So what I mean by that 
is ugly workouts is your intensity after the quality of the movement is there. Mm -hmm. not, uh, not just throwing weights around and making noise in the gym and being really sweaty and just tossing weight and hinging those lat pull downs and yeah. getting those crappy crunches and crappy push-ups in. Quality movements and then push the intensity that'll make an ugly workout, but you have a pretty body at the end of the day. You do that enough, okay? So that's just, the, just that's make the theme sure of the episode that's right the there. theme. There's that's the theme. So one more thing we wanna talk about mechanics wise and uh, is stretching, stretching. Um, those old school aerobic little pulses that people are trying to touch their toes. Um, I just see back spasms coming all damn day. Mm -hmm. So you wanna hold those stretches um, my education behind and my years of experience tell me that at least six seconds of a hold plus there's not enough science out there to prove that six seconds or 30 seconds is any difference that's why yoga moves uh, me personally this is my own belief that's why some movements will have you in there for 10 seconds and some movements will have you in there for 30 because there's mm -hmm. no because what you're doing is you're not stretching the muscle you're stretching the muscle spindle Mm -hmm. uh, around the muscles that holds it all together. So think of a sausage if all that meat into the skin. So you're stretching the skin and the tendons, not necessarily and, the muscle fibers. And, yeah, and that does elongate a little bit too. So, yep. And that was one of my questions when we were going through this little stretch program at a gym we both used to work at together. Yeah. Um, and one was, okay, the, the potential power production of a muscle is relative to the cross-sectional area of that muscle. So yep. if you were to cut... Let's use biceps, perfect example, right? It's long, thin, in my case. If we cut it right down the Stay. middle and we looked at, okay, the end of that round muscle, that's relative to how much power I can produce. So I asked the guy, okay, if we're doing all the stretching, people always ask, hey, do I stretch before? Do I stretch after the workout? Usually I had been telling them, okay, well, technically we're kind of stretching, elongating and putting strain on that muscle by overly stretching them before the workout. Yep. So then it was the, okay, but that's also relative to the amount of time we keep that muscle under tension. So mm -hmm. I think you had said it perfectly, which was 10 seconds, 30 seconds, even a minute, you're probably doing fine. But if we sit for much longer than that, that will end up minorly affecting the total amount of weight we can move on that muscle. But yeah, again, if, but you're, if, stretching if you're stretching just crazy, but again, but even then it's at, yeah, 30 seconds, even a minute, you're still going to be fine. You're, again, you're gonna again feel good. I, I like to, I like to, I like my analogies. And uh, if you've ever been to a sporting event through anything, track and field, uh, sporting events, look at what they're doing before the game and look what they're doing after. You don't mm -hmm. see what they're doing after. They're icing. They're they're still doing stretches, especially people oh, that God, are fighting yeah. injuries. They're stretching. Oh, man. They're stretching oh, yeah. after. You don't see that on TV. And when you go to an event, track and field, Olympics, soccer, mm -hmm. they're warming up. Now, a lot of the stuff they're doing is dynamic to get everything going. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're some, some of the guys are on foam rollers. Some of them have trainers um, assisting them into deeper stretches using mm -hmm. bands and things like that. So, so you can stretch before and after what yeah. bobby said is exactly what i believe is i don't like to do a lot of stretching before but i do like to be warmed up dynamically there we so go. i might do one and stretch of a hamstring stretch one low back stretch some shorter stretches um, um that i know and then do a little bit of warming up prior as in moving mm -hmm. around jumping jacks mountain climbers there shorter we go. taps there we go um even some crunches just to get everything going and then go into my weight training and another good thing you've said in the past also is those off days, right? Okay, don't take a day off, do something. Yeah. And one great thing is let's actually do some of that really nice deep stretching on yeah. a day we're not going to be in the gym anyway. Yeah. That's still working. That's still getting blood pumping. We're trying to elongate some muscles, loosen up the tight areas. That should also give us a little extra time to realize, okay, where are the areas that we're getting tighter through my normal daily routine? Yeah. You might notice, man, I really... God, I really slunch forward when I'm sitting at my little desk for yeah. eight hours a day. And, oh, man, I got to get more stretches on the chest to try to, you know, elongate those muscles and have those shoulders held back a little yeah, bit how many, how so. many, How many times do you know people that actually work in their yard? Do they stretch before? No, God, no. Do they stretch after? No. The only stretching they're doing is in their cooler for their next cool <laughs> beverage, adult beverage. That's all yeah. they're doing is stretching for yeah. that. You're, yeah. so, so think about that. You're out there in your yard with bad form, hunched over, your blow back is curved, pulling weeds, planting uh, planting stuff. It's summertime, Father's Day weekend is coming around the corner mm -hmm. and or any holiday and you're just getting the yard back and you're, but you didn't do any stretching. 
He didn't warm up. He didn't swing the shoulders back and yeah, forth or anything yeah. to warm up. So, so those days off, do a little bit of things mm -hmm. before you know you're sl swinging the sledgehammer. There we go. And you're not a regular person in the, in the gym. Warm up a little bit. Lift it up a little bit. I promise you, you won't be as sore the next day. Mm -hmm. So yep, yep. our That's last thing that we're going to talk about on this episode is breathing. Breathing. See, this we've had is... a lot of requests, so we're answering. We're going to we're going to debunk the breathing. Uh, we've already talked about some of those exercises that we're going to bring up again. Uh, crunches being one of them. When do we exhale? When do we inhale? Um, how often should we be breathing? All these questions. So yeah, super important and totally underrated. That's Jason and I probably got the most experience with that initially just through sports. Yep. Different sports have different movements where it is necessary that you keep breathing. My personal favorite is the type of grappling or wrestling and the perfect time to remember to breathe is when I'm going to pick okay. somebody up. When I get that and I've got hands around somebody's waist and I'm gonna go try to heft them up. And I try to do, it's technically called the Valsalva maneuver where I try to increase the rigidity of my torso by holding my breath, but that's also a natural reaction to just stress and strain on the body. And what I should be doing is getting a nice strong exhale while I'm picking somebody up because typically I hold on and in a scenario like that where, okay, I might still have five minutes left in that round. Yeah. It's going to take me a long time to catch up on breathing. So what I should be teaching myself to do is getting that nice strong exhale out when I'm trying to suplex somebody. Yeah. Well, that's right? very, that's when very, very little of your activity. You're not suplexing. I'm not suplexing all the time, lot. but yeah. it's a good time to say, okay, if I can get that muscle memory down in that environment, okay, when I got that bar across the chest and I'm doing my little bench press, yeah. I should still be able to do the same thing. Get that nice little exhale. I prefer on the way up of a bench press. We'll refer to that as the concentric portion. It's when we're contracting the target muscles. So, but yep. I've also no. worked with some people that say, nah, I just can't do that. It's not natural for me. If it's a controlled movement like that, I personally coach, and I want to get your point of view too. I typically coach, number one, it's you just have to breathe. If it's one of those couple seconds up, couple seconds down thing, then it's okay, give me a breath on each repetition. If it's controlled tempo. Yep. On top of that, okay, if it's you're open to suggestion, then for me, I would say, okay, we're gonna exhale during the press. Or if it's a pull up exhale while I'm coming up to that bar so I can really squeeze the core in with the back and everything coming in together. No, yeah, no, you said it and and you're right because I'm gonna all debunk everyone that wants to argue with me and leave your comments if you have yeah. if you have an issue what we're saying because it's, I'll prove. Breathing it's, backwards is still better than not breathing at all. So I'll give them that one. The hardest part of the movement, whatever movement we're talking about is when you exhale out. You wanna use your air as power, mm -hmm. okay? Oxygen goes through our blood. Okay, so our so here's what here's here's a couple things that will happen if you're not breathing properly through your movement, whether it's crunches, bench press, um, grappling, um, even boxing, um, swimming. There's techniques that we know what does you know what side you're strong at when you're getting your exhale mm -hmm. and when you're inhaling because you're not breathing as you're just in your mouth in the water. You're not going to last very long in a pool. Uh, Bobby's going to be jumping in and giving you the Heimlich yeah. and stuff. It's not the Heimlich CPR. <laughs> either one either one either one i'll try them both yeah. but but the hardest part of the movement is when you're exhaling and why is that it's because if you don't breathe properly and you do a big movement like bobby just said picking up a guy or a, and someone to lift them up really heavy that's when hernias can act that's when blood vessels can bust that's when high blood pressure can happen if you're doing this regularly so what bobby was talking about with on the bench press exhaling on the way up that's the hardest movement Gravity is going to let that weight come back down. So you might as well recover there and inhale through the nose mm -hmm. and things. Same thing with a crunch. Exhale on the hardest part. What's the hardest part? Getting up. You're fighting, right there. you're fighting the gravity Work. on the way up. So you want to exhale. Use your use air as energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's almost like Bruce Work. Lee. Water. Be yeah. water. Be be air. Yeah. Be air as well. You want air. Now, based on how many reps, that might change. Like Bobby if said, if it's a really fast pace, press, crazy thing, it's okay. We can't really pace out the breathing the same. Sometimes when I'm trying to get two repetitions of something, I'm not going to breathe until the last rep because I feel like I'm strong enough where I can hold my air until that second rep. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're doing ten reps, then you might have to know when to exhale. Um, if you don't want to breathe every rep, and if it's not yeah. a control movement, if your if your tempo is a one to one or mm -hmm. even three to two yeah. um, ratio, is different. So exhale on the hardest part of the on movement. On the difficult part, where Use we your... want contraction anyway. Yep. 
So use your use your nose as the filter when you have when you can control your breathing. Boxers, I think, do a really good at just this because that's why they make they don't make the noise just to make noise and stuff. I Even think some Serena, of them do. some Serena, of them are super obnoxious. Tennis but. players, it's a little dramatic, and some people just find it funny. But they're when they've got a big backhand on their swing and they want to get it across, and they've already vo volleyed ten reps. They that's why they're doing that. They're exhausted. They're getting all the air, all the energy they can out when they're doing the hardest movement and the hardest movement of that is when they're hitting the ball back to mm -hmm. the, the other person. So that's, that's, I don't have any, um, anything else. I don't think anyone should be arguing when they're breathing. If you're breathing, if, I can't even, if I can't they argue, even, it's only cause they're uncomfortable with it, which also could be a sign that, Hey, maybe we need to dial that weight back again. Yeah. That's the same thing. That's a major mechanic to exercise is getting the breathing down right. So yeah, if can, we just, I just can't do it. Okay, well, let's go with no resistance on your body. Yeah, I'll just have you stand up and we'll just physically pantomime yeah. doing that press. It's okay, just think about that mental and, yeah. and muscle memory and form that habit yeah. because yeah. once you get in the rhythm of it, it's fine. And, you and know, I've had some stubborn clients over the years and I've had arguments with people, go ahead, hold your breath the whole time and then we'll have a hernia yeah. uh, and high blood pressure if you do this on a daily basis. Yeah. You're gonna yeah. feel like you're gonna pass out after every single set. Yeah. You're not gonna be able to move much weight. You're probably gonna have to drop the weights earlier. It's, it's just, it's, I, there's I mean, no reason for it. I mean, just think of the basics. Don't even go into the gym. Think of something that you're, I mean, on the farm, I mean, ripping out a, a tree root. You're holding your breath the whole time trying to pull that one root that's not coming out of the dirt mm -hmm. and dirt, the, the dirt, dirt and coming out of the dirt and you're not breathing. Where if you would exhale as you're lifting, mm -hmm. you might have more power behind pulling that root out yeah. and stuff. And a punch, boxers, they're punch, they're exhaling. They're making that little sss, sss, mm -hmm. that little, um, that was pretty cool. If you're on audio listening right now, that's going to be awesome for you oh, guys. Oh yeah, you know right that there. little sss, 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 I stop it. Yeah. Okay. So punch. So you're so as you're punching, your air is going out of your body. Yep. And stuff. And inhale as you reload. There we go. That's so it. use some of these techniques. Use those mechanics. Always be aware of your body and these mechanics that we've talked about. Um, start thinking about uh, some of your movements when you're doing crunches, when you're doing your squats. Make sure your feet are properly in place. Sit down one time. Stand up, see where your feet are, and you'll know where your regular stance is after a few more reps. So just be aware. That's it. That's what we're teaching with the mechanics today. And then breathing, always, always exhale on the hardest part of the movement. So. Exhale during the hard part. That's what's happening. All right, kids. We'll talk to you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching or listening to today's episode. We'd love if you leave a comment down below. Don't forget to give us a five-star review. Like us, share us, and follow all the guests from today's episode. And remember, if it was easy, it'd be damn cheesy.